Hi, Karen. Thank you so much for joining me in this podcast episode. Really appreciate it. How are you today? I'm great. I'm really excited to be here and talk with you today. Yeah, same here. Like you have an interesting journey you had, like uh, building your businesses, the obstacle you have to go through and overcoming your fear. And it's not easy things to do. Like a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to start a business and make a successful overnight and everything will be <laughs> nice and pretty. We're going to be having like lap- laptop lifestyle. But obviously it wasn't that case for you as well. So you have to grind it out, like build a business where you are right now. So before you started everything like your business, is that you always in mind, like you want to be a business person or like uh, accidentally you one day decided like, no, the career of being an employee, working for someone is not something for me. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always kind of been there, the idea of doing my own thing, Um you know, I've had a lot of experience, in a lot of different kind of areas and industries, predominantly sales and technology. But, um, you know, I always had that where I saw ways you could do things more efficiently, um, better or achieve results quicker, things like that. So I always found those ways to make improvements. And so um, my business now, where I'm completely independent, working for myself with my coaching and mentoring business, allows me to do that. I'm able to focus on the areas where are my strengths and, you know, what comes naturally to me and has given me results in my career prior when I was working for others. Mm, interesting. So like a building a business, like how, how, many, how many years it's been like since you started and actually like in full time, you, you serving people? Um, I started it two years ago. Um, I would say full time this year really went into it. Um, I made a, a big move from US to Spain last year. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of things were going on. And then um, as things kind of settled and I adapted to my new country, um, for now anyway, um, I was able to spend more time on the business now and uh, creating content, meeting more people, getting clients, um, focusing on marketing and really um, getting clear on who I want to help. Yeah. And um, then there's all these different ways of doing it, of course, but, um, you know, getting clear on that as well. Yeah, interesting. And we always know, like, uh, starting a business in the first two years is like really, really tough times, like a uh, 95% yes. of businesses go out of yeah. business in the first two years. So yeah. what was yeah, you your gotta, uh, Yeah, you, do, you gotta have the the patience for it and the and know that it's gonna take some time. It's it's essentially uh, initially you're you're planting seeds yeah. and you're nurturing and you have a vision of you know it growing and just staying true to the vision allows you to do the right steps early on. And um I mean, that's how I believe really you can develop anything. Um, But um, I was talking over you a little bit. I apologize. So (laughs) you had a question for me? Yeah, yeah. The question was like a first year of business is always difficult. And like when it's starting out, like a lot of people have no clue what they're actually doing, what their target market is, how they do marketing, who they reach out to, how to build a team. Like what was your struggle was in uh, building a business in the first year? Hmm. Um, I, I, you know, I think getting clear on my target market, um, you know, I definitely felt, um, compelled and the desire to work with women because Mm -hmm. as I've been a woman in sales, I had dealt with a lot of situations where I might've been the only woman on the team or in the organization and sales. And so there were a lot of challenges that came with that. Um, and when you have managers that maybe, see things predominantly from a male perspective, you don't have more of that balance. Yeah. Um, so that was something I got very clear on is I wanted to help other women um, be successful and do more. And also understanding some of the challenges that we face as women. And because my background is predominantly sales um, and I've done very well in sales, um, that was what I have put together as far as like my mm-hmm. intro to mm-hmm. help other driven women uh, be more successful in sales basically so they can sell more work less hours which is what I did and with that you know you hear about burnout and it's like it can happen in sales is especially an industry where you see a ton of that but um, so I would say you know finding specifically who I was going to speak to 
And so I got really clear that it was, you know, driven women, uh, mm -hmm. predominantly in sales, but a lot of the methods I use and, um, you know, the, the mindset and different things apply to any, you know, professional woman or somebody who wants to just live, achieve a dream or go for something bigger than they're doing right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So starting a business in the first year, like a, finding the, your niche, like we want to work with, and that was like your struggle. And then obviously eventually you found out and working them. And then it's like COVID time, right? Like when it started the business, if it's yeah. two years ago, like a COVID time, like a, do you think like it's easier to like grow your business during the COVID time or like a normal time, like compared to right now? What is like a like, um, well, I started during COVID or, um, but I wouldn't say that I was really growing it strong at the time because I was still finding my way, mm -hmm. um, you know, from other peers that I speak with, I think things have changed a lot. Yeah. Um, but I'm also a firm believer. There's the only right time to start a business or do it is now. And whether it's a strong economy or a weak economy, you're going to learn things either way. And as a business owner, you have to be able to ride out those highs and lows and be able to pivot and make adjustments in your business. So um, I would say my business is stronger, but only because I'm going through the growth trajectory that comes with being my first couple of years of business. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's a hard time, like during the COVID time, a lot of people like don't know like what they're actually going into, like uncertain times. Some people are thriving in their businesses, their business are crippled four times and other businesses like are going out of businesses because of like law factors in there, like a big model businesses, like they couldn't open restaurants, they couldn't open. So as the entrepreneur yourself, working with, working with like a females entrepreneurs, what are like a pain point you've been focusing on helping them and tr try to get the results? Yeah. Um, well, to give you an idea, I, I used to get requests when I worked um, at, you know, corporate environment, I would get requests every year for, you know, coffee dates, lunch dates, people wanted to pick my brain, see what I was doing to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I would um, meet with different women and I would share just like a little snapshot of what I was doing and just to, happy to share always, um, you know, I welcome that as I was growing in my career and happy to give that back as well. But um, as far as um, the pain point, I find like one of the things that, and I see it so much in women. I'm sure men have a challenge with this as well, but, you know, mindset and believing that you can do something, believing in your dream and actually taking the steps. Yeah. I think that is really um, where people struggle. And no matter where I've been in my career, whether I was just starting out or 20 plus years in sales, you know, imposter syndrome is a real thing. And I can tell you now after 20 plus years, I'll have moments where it'll still pop up and I'll question things I'm doing, but because I've been doing it and I recognize it, what it is, I can, you know, kind of acknowledge it for what it is, say, that's not true. You know, I mm -hmm. have all this experience. I have this proven success. There's no reason for me to question what I can do. And I'm doing because I've proven it. And um, I think for someone starting out, it comes from also like, what is your talent? What is your passion? What's your desire? What comes naturally to you? And those are the things when you recognize that within yourself, like believe in that. I mean, yeah. that's what you've been given. Those are your gifts and you use them and share them. And if you stay true to that, the rest will follow. Yeah, so true. Like you mentioned, like believing in yourself as an entrepreneur, like it's the most important things, like believing in yourself. Like when you started out, I know like there was so much doubts, like this is a new thing I'm starting out. Like, I don't know how it's going to pan out. Like, am I going to get clients? Yeah. Am I going to be a yeah. best service them? So how did you overcome all of them? Like a uh, fear or like not believing in yourself and eventually you build the up, like the mindset. Yeah. Um, I, fortunately I've, even since a child, I mean, I've always been very um, futuristic and optimistic. 
And so I've always been able to find positive in situations. I would say that to make these things happen, it took a few things. Um, to the conversation where I got really clear on what I wanted to happen, the end result. Mm -hmm. And when I could see what that is and be very clear, then I would just state it as fact. And some would call it a, intentions. Um, and to journal it or to say it out loud or remind yourself in your head. I mean, it's the repeated thought. What we think, you know, determines our actions. So yeah. if you're thinking you are going to have a personal coaching business and help women transform their sales and their careers, then it happens because all the other things go in line with that. So that's part of the mindset, I think, is just being consistent with it. Um, the other thing that I also recommend in my coaching and I found works is it's very easy for any of us as individuals to take a look at what we did wrong or what we didn't do enough of. Um, you know, we we beat ourselves up worse than anybody, right? Yeah. <laughs> and definitely. so on a daily practice, I also find it really helpful to focus on three wins, whether you do this at the end of the day or you reflect in the morning on the day before. But when you look at everything you do in a day, you can find three things that you did that contributed to your goal or your dream. Mm -hmm. And it can be small things. It might be, you know, signing up for um, a course or some training. It could be making a dreaded phone call that you didn't want to, to what could be your ideal client. Yeah. Um, you know, or it could be something, you know, really big, but it's too easy, I think, for entrepreneurs and people to get down on this. Well, I was supposed to do this and I didn't do this and I didn't. But if you really focus on those three things you did, you'll see every day that you literally are making progress to your goals. And it also helps you recognize really that you are taking those steps and the positive um, things that you're doing to grow your business and make that contribution in the world. Yeah, definitely. That's like a need to be addressed for like all of the entrepreneurs, like having what are you going for, like having kind of the vision or like a goal set, like that keep you aligned, like when you have like a tough times, tough days, and you look mm -hmm. at it and you know, like I'm going the right track, probably today's the moment, it's not for me, but it's going to eventually happen in a time, the more patient I will be. So yeah, let's moving forward to like them off days, you have sometimes things not working out, like uh, the meeting didn't go as well as you expected or like a certain things like didn't go and you have bills to pay and you didn't close any deals. What do you do? Is it feel like you feel like a quitting or like feel like this thing is not working out? What do you actually do in terms of like them kind of moment to keep you moving forward? Yeah, um, I cry. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, all of that is, is again, real life and part of the journey of entrepreneurship. Um, again, I think if you are on a daily basis getting your mind and your goals in the right place, you can bounce back from those things a lot quicker mm -hmm. because they're not controlling you. And it's unrealistic to think that those things won't happen because it is part of entrepreneurship. So, I mean it's not the norm, you know, it happens only once in a while. So yeah. if you're staying on that steady track with your mind and, and your belief process and what you're dedicated to, you're not going to be derailed or want to quit in that by those, they'll just be little blips and yeah. you move on. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. You just have to like focus on what the long-term vision is compared to like it was short-term pain you're having or the things not going the way you expected but in the same yeah. time like if you can learn from the mistake if something you can control then Absolutely. you just control over it otherwise like that client didn't pay like you can't do anything about it well if you think like you didn't do the great service to them then obviously it makes sense like why they're not actually paying or the things didn't follow through and so i have like another question which will be the most important one like uh, you made a transition into business world like two years back 
And obviously before you're starting out, there could be a lot of doubts. How am I going to start the law of fears and everything? So there is an upcoming people like who wants to start a business like yourself, got the great ideas or like they're passionate about certain things. And if they want to start out and they have like lots of responsibility, they have to feed their family or, or they're not unable to quit their job. What would be your advice for someone can start out and like uh, go with the fashion? Yeah. Um, very realistic for it to be part-time um, starting. I mean, especially when, you know, family and making sure that, um, you know, obviously bills need to be paid and people need yeah. to be fed. That's very important. And also um, the stress level, you want to keep it to a level that you can manage. Otherwise, you know, you'll burn out or give up. Um, Again, we we kind of had this early in the conversation, but the right time to start is always now. And you have the dream. It's about taking action. And that's where like, you know, journaling your wins or recognizing your wins. If your bandwidth allows you to maybe only work on your business five hours a week, it's a start. And you'll make progress week after week by doing that. Yeah. Um, and if you have more time, you can do it. And then the other thing is, and this is in my coaching, we do a, a time assessment and evaluation where you really analyze where you spend blocks of time. And sometimes you can start to see some patterns and maybe some areas where you could reallocate your time and get um, closer to your dream and goal by maybe you have to replace one activity or a time block with something else to get there. And then I think that, the other thing that that really, this would be good to talk about because your question talk is definitely about this is failure, you know, yeah. that's real people thinking, you know, well, what if I fail? And you had talked about, you know, learning from your mistakes, learning when things don't work out, what you can take from those experiences. And it's like, that is absolutely key right there. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to roll with that and be open to that and know that it's going to happen at times, but it's how you handle it will make the difference. But the fear of failure can freeze so many people from not taking any action. And I heard somebody say this once, and I thought it was just brilliant, um, that they didn't want to be, you know, older or on their deathbed and regretting the things they didn't do because they were afraid they'd fail. Because yeah. if you fail at something, you know, big deal. You just do it a different way and try again, or maybe you, you find out something's not for you, or maybe you realize you need some help to make it happen and some resources or some training and just pick yourself up and go forward again, because you have the dream, you have the talent, you have the ideas. And that's what you want to focus on. So you're not a failure when you're trying. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Trying is the most important. But without like trying, you don't know like the thing is like, do you have passion for it? Or like if the thing's going to work out? Or like how things going to find out without like trying yourself? So it's yeah. like a great advice. Um, thanks to you for that. For Karen. So we're coming to end of this podcast. It's been a great pleasure having you. And it's been a great lesson for me as well. So those who's listening, if anyone to learn more about your work, your business, what is the best place to find you? Yeah, so uh, my website is my name. So it's karnbrown.co, which is K-A-R-N-B-R-O-W-N.co. Um, you can learn a little bit more about my process, what I do, and how I can help driven women. Um, you can also access a free guide that's available for download on my website. And it's the Driven Woman's Guide to Working Smarter, Not Harder. And so it's a great resource and it really touches more on um, what we talked about and really helping with that mindset, especially when you're getting started or if you've been doing really well in your career or in sales, but you really want to take it to the next level. It's some things that you can implement right away and start seeing results. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for that. I wish you best of luck. And yeah, thanks for your coming by today. I uh, hope you have a wonderful holiday season, Christmas and the new year. All right. Thank thanks you. so much for inviting me. No problem at all. That's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I got some value from it as well. I, I'm going to leave you to it. And we're going to talk to you in the next episode. Take care.